Welcome back to the channel, and for today's video, we're back at Capital Casino for a 1-3 match to stack session. We buy in for $400 to start, but don't worry, a lot more money will be on the table this session because this game is playing massive today. And to show proof, in the first hand of play, the live $10 straddle is on for this hand, so the blinds are 1-3-10. We look down at pocket deuces in middle position, and I open up the action to $25. It folds to the under-the-gun straddler who takes a couple peeks at his cards and three bets to $100. A three bet out of the blinds is almost always strong. And my opponent only has about $275, so the only two moves are an all-in or fold. I tell him, well, I know you got two overs, and toss my hand in the muck. He shows ace-king and nothing we could really do here. If I had pocket eights or better, I probably would have gone with it. After raising with the beautiful ace king of diamonds and missing the flop completely, then getting 8-3 offsuit in a bomb pot where we fold bottom pair, we add on $300 to give ourselves over 100 big blinds since the live 6 has been on most hands. We are now into the game for $700. In this next hand, one of the OMCs decided not to straddle and we see a player in early position open to $15. I'm next to act and look down at the bullets, pocket aces, and three bet to $45 in position. The original razor puts in the call and we're going heads up to a flop. The dealer throws out a king eight three rainbow board and the early position checks in flow. I decide to throw out a bet of just $25 since it's such a dry flop that favors my range and the king could possibly be an action killer. But he puts in the call we go to a four of clubs turn. Our opponent was a thinking player, so I think I could only get two streets of value from this hand because if I keep lasting off, he's good enough to fold the king on a third street. So when he checks on the turn, I decide to check it back for deception and making it look like I was stabbing with something like ace queen. So with $140 in the middle, the river comes out the three of hearts pairing the board. He quickly throws out a $100 bet, and my initial reaction was to obviously just snap call, but since I took the deceptive route with my line, I think a raise is in order to make my line look weird. I raised it $220, and our opponent starts to him and haw. He eventually throws his hand in the muck and said, I almost called you down with ace high, and we take down a nice pot. My line was very player dependent, and if I was up against a calling station, I would have just blasted away, but I think it's important to mix it up against thinking players. In this next hand, I throw on the $6 straddle and we see the cutoff open to $25. He's been playing pretty tight so far, so I think this open is a pretty good hand. The button and big blind both put in the call, and I look down at ace-king offsuit, and I think a squeeze play is in order. In the past, I have 3-bet too small, but I think going 4x plus each caller is the best sizing, so I raise up the price of poker to $150. The original razor and button both fold, but the big blind decides to put in the call. I think this range is almost always middling pairs and suited hands wanting to see a flop. I can never see a hand like King Jack offsuit double flatting here. We go heads up to a bloated pot with $350 already in the middle and the flop comes out 10 deuce deuce with two clubs. Our opponent checks and I think for a second and decide how much I'd bet with an overpair here. I end up deciding on a bet of $110 which is what I would bet with my entire range leaving ourselves a little less than a pot size bet to jam most turns. But that's not what happens when our opponent takes the aggression into his own hands and jams himself. I was about to just snap call and say, Ah, fuck it. But then I got to thinking about his range, which I'm trying to be better with. If he has a hand like Ace-10 suited, I'm in horrible shape. If he has a hand like Queen-Jack of Clubs, I'm basically coin flipping. And if he's spazzing out with a hand like Pocket 8s, I surprisingly only have 28% equity. I have to call my remaining $460 to win a pot of $1,490, so I need about 31% to make a break-even call. My brain hurts! Honestly, I have zero clue how to do this shit in my head while playing, so in the moment, I thought if he has a flush draw, I'm flipping, a pair I have six outs against, 
and if he has ace-10, I'm absolutely crushed. That eventually led me to folding my hand and tossing it in the muck. Let me know in the comments how you would have played it, because this hand left me with pretzel brain. The next hand we play comes from a bomb pot. Seven people join the party, and we look down at eight six of clubs. The flop comes out king king eight, and I'm looking to take it down now, not wanting to see another card. With $100 in the pot, I bet $25, but next to act jams his entire stack. Folds back to me, and I just snap fold since there's no way I'm good here. We pull out some more ammo from the money clip and add on $300, and we're already into the game for four figures after just one hour of play. In this next hand, the $10 straddle is on and two people limp. I look down at my favorite hand in poker, which is Jack-10 suited, and decide to just call the $10 in the small blind. If I was on the button, I would probably ISO raise, but since I'm out of position, I want to try and see a cheap flop. That's not what happens when an OMC in the big blind jams his entire short stack of just $100. Both limpers fold, and now I have a decision. There's $40 already in the pot, and I only have to call 90 more, which is only 9 effective big blinds. So I flick in the call knowing I'm way behind and turn over my hand like I always do when I'm all in. And he shows... Pocket aces. Shocker. The flop comes out king eight three rainbow with no spades. And the turn comes out the jack of diamonds giving us a sliver of hope. But we see a three of clubs on the river and lose yet another pot. You think it was bullshitting or what? No, but what the hell? You know what? For 100, yeah. I, I, you know what? I do that, but I got money too. We get moved to the main game and hope our luck starts to turn around at a new table. In this next hand, Under the Gun 2 opens to $12. Next stack calls, and I look down at the bullets, pocket aces. It's time to raise the price of poker, so I choose the 3 bet to $60. Only the field caller puts in the call, and usually that is very pair heavy. The flop comes out queen 7 6 with two spades and our opponent checks. I decide to down bet to $45 since I'm blocking the nut flush draw, but to my surprise, our opponent basically puts in the min click to $100. Usually these min clicks are a see where I'm at type of raise, so I look to my right at his stack and he only has about $220 remaining. So I decide to just go with it and jam all in before any scare cards come out. He tanks for a little and folds pocket jacks face up. Definitely wasn't expecting that, especially after I raised, but I'm glad we take down the pot and our stack is headed in the right direction. By who? You. Man, we have fucking jackpot driving. Nah. We see another dealer change, so it's time for the famous Capital Casino bomb pots. The entire table joins the party, so there's $130 in the pot already, and I look down at Ace-3 offsuit with the Ace of Hearts. The flop comes out 7-3 deuce with two hearts, and it gets checked to me in late position. I figured someone with a pair would have stabbed at this to protect against the draw out there, so I throw out a little feeler bet of $30 with my middle pair, and somehow, all eight players toss their hand in the muck. Alright, alright, alright. <laughs> We go car dead for the next hour until we get involved in an interesting hand. The $6 straddle is on and an action player opens to $20 in the cutoff. The button puts in the call and I look down at king queen offsuit. The action player on the cutoff has been opening super wide so I think a squeeze play is definitely in order. I raise the price of poker to $90 and both players put in the call. I wasn't really expecting that given the late position configuration, but here goes nothing. With $270 already in the pot and $465 in our stack, let's see what happens. We're going three ways to a flop of ace-jack-9 with two clubs. I usually don't bluff multi-way without at least a big draw, but I decided to throw out a one-third size bet of $85 to see what ensues. The cutoff opener folds, and now the button goes in the tank for over a minute. He eventually decides to put in the call, and I'm trying to think of what he's tanking with. At the time I was thinking this must be a weak ace, since 1. He didn't 3-bet the cutoff opener who has been playing very wide, and 2. I think a hand like ace-jack or ace-9 wouldn't have tanked, 
and either called pretty quickly or put in a raise already. So with that in mind, we go to a four of hearts turn, and since I sense weakness with this tank on the flop, I decide to go with my hand and jam all in. I think this board crushes my three betting range given that I could have all the strong hands like pocket aces, ace king, ace queen, pocket jacks, and sometimes pocket nines that I would play this exact way. My opponent goes even deeper in the tank and starts trying to talk through his decision. He's saying how he's super confident that I have a good hand, but then I see him start cutting out calling chips. And at that moment I realized that the ace on the board wasn't a club, and one combo I didn't take into account was top pair with the redraw to the nuts. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. He eventually puts in the call, and I tell him how I have three outs, and we see an ace of diamonds on the river putting the nail in the coffin. Our opponent chose ace five of clubs for river trips, and just like we predicted, he had the redraw to the nuts. I'm just kicking myself for not realizing that was a possibility before donking off my entire stack. Oh, you! An idiot sandwich. At this point in the session, I'm down exactly a thousand dollars, but. Mama ain't ever raised no bitch. Not up in here! So I empty the clip and add on another thousand dollars to my stack, and I'm now into a 1 3 game for two thousand dollars. Never thought I'd say that in my life, but poker is one long session, so I just have to stay focused and look to make the best decisions each hand. There's two limps to me, and I look down at 10 8 of hearts on the button. I decide to overlimp this hand to see a cheap flop, but now the small blind raises to $21. The big blind and both limpers put in the call, so we also put in the call, and we're going five ways to the flop with exactly $100 in the pot. The dealer puts out a queen-queen-jack two-heart flop, and we have ourselves a monster combo straight flush draw. The small blind starts off with a check, and it gets checked to me. I think we've established that I have a horrible image right now, so I decide to just check it back. The turn comes out a complete blank in the two of clubs, and now the small blind, who raises $21 pre-flop, throws out a $40 bet. Everyone folds to me, and I think that's a fair price to continue, so I stick in the call. We go heads up to a river, which comes out the beautiful nine of clubs, giving us the straight. Our opponent checks, and given our image, I think a hefty bet is in order. I decide on a sizing of $125 to target a non-believing Jack X hand, and he eventually puts in the call. I show my hand and it's good. Thank you. We try to keep the momentum going when we open pocket jacks to $20 in early position. A middle position player calls and the $6 straddler calls as well. We're going three ways to a flop which comes out 953 with two hearts. The straddler checks and I decide to see bet for one green chip. Only the straddler calls the $25, so we're going heads up to a turn with $100 in the pot. The turn comes out the jack of hearts, giving us top set. It does bring in the front door flush, but when the straddler checks again, I still think a bet is in order. I decide on a half pot bet of $50, and he quickly calls again. I'm putting him on a stubborn 9x hand at this point, or maybe a hand like ace-5 with the ace of hearts. The river comes out the six of clubs, and out of nowhere, our opponent donks for $100. I'm not loving it because people usually play small flushes in this manner, but I'm never folding top set, so I stick in the call, and our opponent says that he has a set. I turn over my hand before he could show because we're friendly, and he taps the table and says I'm good. I never got to see what he had, but I'm just happy to take it down. Nice After that hand, our stack is finally headed in the right direction. I throw on the $6 straddle and there's three limps to me. I look down at 10-7 offsuit and obviously decide to check my option. The flop comes out 6-5-4 rainbow and we have ourselves an open-ended straight draw. I decide to start off with the check and early position bets for $15. The button calls and I call as well. We're going three ways to a turn, which comes out the nine of spades, giving us a double gut shot since any three or eight will give us a straight. 
I decide to check again, but now the early position player bumps up the price of poker to $70. He only has about $200 behind after this bet, so I was honestly thinking about folding until the button decided to call again. I don't think I could ever fold now given the pot odds, so I also stick in the call. In the river comes out the bink eight of spades giving us the nut straight. Now I'm foaming out the mouth because I'm pretty sure one of these guys has a seven for a worse straight. I decide to take the lead myself and bet $175. The early position player goes deep into the tank, but eventually puts in the fold. But now the button raised the $375, which caught me completely off guard. Let's go to the audio to see my live thought process. Wow. Six, seven of spades. I mean, I know you're not bluffing, but... end up convincing myself that he could do this with a seven and decide to stick in the call. He shows king three of spades for a rivered flush. The early position player said that he had seven eight for a flop straight. After hearing all this, I'm just upset at myself for calling a river raise when the backdoor flush got there, so I racked up shortly after. Let's get to the outro. Honestly, pretty disgruntled after that session started off with the ace king hand where i didn't know what to do when our opponent jammed on us so i defaulted to a fold and we moved tables and punted off our entire stack with king queen offsuit after that we honestly were looking like we were going to get things going when we strung together a few good pots with 10 8 pocket jacks and pocket eights but then <laughs> we'd called a river raise like a donkey when we rivered a straight and then our opponent rivered a flush i had it at that point so let's go to the results, which we were into the game for $2,000 and out for $965 for our biggest loss ever of $1,035. I hate to say it, but I guess I got to be okay with this result because we're not playing in a 1-2 game anymore. We're playing in a game with $10 straddles, and in the end, it's not that big of a loss when you take that into account. As for my live poker results this week, you guys saw my biggest loss ever, which was on Friday the 2nd, followed up with another massive loss where we ran ace-king into pocket-kings pre-flop against a super action player for over $600. We also got in another hand with ace-king against NorCal vlogger legend Doug McCusker where he might have got us off a chop. Keep an eye out if that hand gets posted on his weekly Sunday vlog. And if you haven't followed him already, go over there and support. He has awesome poker content. We luckily had a nice $507 win on Tuesday the 6th after being down over $400 early on in that session. For the first week of February, we played 12 hours and 40 minutes of live poker and unfortunately had a net loss of $1,542. As for online poker, we only played 2 hours and 35 minutes but got a little back with $52 of profit. That totals our weekly losses to $1,490. Hopefully the two massive losses were an outlier, but that's what I love about poker is you never know. As always, thanks for all the support and I hope you rung it at the tables and I'd appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button to help me reach my year-end goal of 2,500 subscribers.